Now, everyone and their dog are raving about the iPhone 15 Pro and the Pro Max, these fancy titanium action buttoned flagships from Apple. But the problem is they're very expensive. And I contend actually, after having spent a week with well, every new iPhone, that it's these guys, the regular iPhones, the 15 and 15 plus are actually the most compelling and also best value iPhones this year. I say good value, but I mean, even the cheapest iPhone 15 is 800 pounds, uh, same in dollars, although that actually is a little bit cheaper than last year's 14s, here in the UK at least. It's an awful lot of money and there are a couple of issues with this, but I reckon compared to the Pro models and also compared to last year's 14s, these guys are actually the better option. Let me explain. And first of all, all iPhone 15s have now switched to a USB-C port. After 11 years of lightning, Apple have finally seen the light. And it now means you can share the same charging cable as your friends with Android phones. And it's just a lot more future-proof. We also now get the Dynamic Island, which is not just on the Pros anymore. And it's a genuinely awesome little notification widget for everything from timers, gate information for your flight, map directions, Uber times, your airdrop progress. It seemed a bit gimmicky at first last year, but I've grown to love this thing. On the back, we've gone from a glossy glass to a frosted sort of matte glass, which is much closer to what you get on the Pro models. And I reckon that looks and feels a whole lot smarter and more premium. The only downside compared to previous glossy versions is it feels more slippery in the hand. So be careful. Not that any of that matters if you're putting a case on it anyway. And of course, the advantage of going from the 15 to the plus is that you get a bigger screen. So it's a bit more immersive for your videos and games. But more importantly, for me at least, this lasts a good deal longer. And we'll come back to the battery in a second. But it's 100 quid more for a bigger screen and bigger battery. It is a big phone though, possibly too big for a lot of people. Although if you are coming from say an iPhone 8 plus, despite the fact that has a 5.5 inch screen and this has a 6.7 inch, this only weighs one gram more. It's about one and a half millimeters taller, but it's actually a little bit narrower. Uh, and on these big phones, actually that sort of width is more important. So if you're used to a plus size model, shall we say, of phones, that is, uh, then you'll be fine with the 15 plus. But I reckon for most people, uh, it is the regular 15 that's gonna be more popular and it's also 100 quid cheaper. And just like last year, the 15 still get IP68 water and dust resistance. So you could potentially take it in the shower with you, might be a bit weird, but it will survive a six meter dunk for half an hour in fresh water. We still get Apple's ceramic shield for the front glass, and we still have MagSafe wireless charging in addition to the new USB-C port for wire charging, although still at a sluggish 20 watts. And all that's the same between the 15s and the 15 Pros. And unlike the Pros, we still have the classic mute toggle switch up here and not the fancy pants new action mode button. So USB-C, the Dynamic Island, this new nicer frosted matte glass texture, and that is about it for the design. But let's talk about this screen because while it's the same size as last year, it's a whole lot brighter. In fact, they've matched the screen brightness of the regular 15s to the Pro models for the first time. And it really does make a difference. What hasn't changed, and you can probably guess what I'm gonna say here, is this refresh rate. Still 60 hertz. What is essentially a 2024 high-end phone, I mean, this starts at 800 pounds, same in dollars, we're still limited to 60 hertz. You can get a nothing phone one for about 500 less than this, and that has a 120 hertz OLED screen. I don't understand. Either Apple are just being lazy or they're being a bit cheap. Even if they bumped it up to maybe 90 hertz, I'd have taken it. At least then there's still a bit of a difference between the regular ones and the Pro. But it's such a shame, and because we also have this new A16 chip, well, I say new, but we'll come to that in a second, you just don't really feel the extra performance year on year when you're limited to 60 hertz. Does the average person, the normie, if you will, outside of YouTube and the tech space really care about it? I don't know, probably not. It's not an excuse to not give it to them. To be honest, it is my number one issue with the iPhone 15s. And I wouldn't go as far as saying it's a deal breaker by any stretch. It's just a bit disappointing. So let's move on and talk about the chip inside here. We have the A16 Bionic, which is the same processor. If I get the right phone, no, that's the wrong one. Uh, this one has the same chip that you get in last year's 14 Pros. This is the new sort of routine where the regular phones get last year's Pro chip. So it is a year on year upgrade, but they continue to be one year behind the more expensive versions. And to give you an idea of relative performance, I have the 14 and the 14 Plus, the 15 and the 15 Plus, and the 15 Pro and Pro Max. And you can see, at least in numbers, how the base 15s compared to last year, and also the beefier Pro models that now come with the A17 Pro chip. The thing is though, they're all incredibly capable, and in day-to-day -day use, you'd probably struggle to tell them apart. Except, of course, for the refresh rate difference. 
Although, one of the new features of the A17 Pro chip in the 15 Pros is its support for hardware ray tracing. But this is a very niche use case right now. Barely any games support it. Although what is more exciting about the 15 Pros is their ability to play console level games. This A17 Pro chip has a redesigned and much beefier graphics engine, which means I can actually play Resident Evil Village natively using what I'm told are PS4 level assets, albeit at low to medium settings, 720p, 30fps, on the 15 Pro, which is very impressive. And we have the likes of the Resi 4 remake, we have a Division game, Assassin's Creed Mirage, and even Death Stranding coming out over the next few months. But I reckon if you're coming from an iPhone 11 or older, then you'll probably notice the difference in performance with the A16, which is an incredibly powerful chip, particularly in games. And because we get six gigs of RAM in here, which is the same as last year and not quite the eight gigs you get in the Pro models, but compared to older iPhones, you can now keep lots more apps paused in the background and then quickly switch back to resume. So yes, the pros get the A17 Pro chip, uh, which allows them to play some console level games, and it is a little bit quicker generally, uh, particularly with ray tracing in like the handful of games that support it. And we have those couple extra gigs of RAM, but really what you'll notice is the refresh rate. It just feels much smoother and more responsive. Now, before we get to the camera, I just want to mention the battery life. Over the course of the last week, where I've been testing all these iPhones, the 15 Plus has got me to about 11 p.m. at night with around 35% of its battery remaining, whereas the iPhone 15 has about 22, maybe 23% left. So a good sort of three hours difference between these guys. It depends how you use it, but a day and a half of use with this is pretty reasonable. Uh, we also get USB-C, of course, which is a bit more future-proof. And I think for me, above anything else, it's these camera improvements on the iPhone 15s that make these a genuinely worthwhile upgrade. So let's get into it. Let's talk about this camera. And there's a really satisfying difference between the 14, the 15, and the 15 Pros. Each one gets you a noticeably better camera. And going left to right, it looks like a bad wax work of me, and then a good wax work, and then maybe the real me at the end. So in the camera department, yes, the pros are still better. They have bigger sensors, so they capture more light. They have the third lens for either a three or five times telephoto zoom, and you get higher quality pro raw and pro res options. But for everyday stuff, I think the 15 and 15 plus offer a more significant improvement year on year than the pros. For starters, all iPhone 15s share the same 48 megapixel resolution for the main camera, including now combining a full fat 48 megapixel photo with a more traditional four into one pixel binned 12 megapixel photo, giving us a new 24 megapixel image. And if none of that means anything to you, don't worry. It just means photos are a bit more detailed, particularly if you crop in. And yes, the file sizes are a bit bigger, but only about 50% bigger, not double that you might expect having double the resolution. The 48 megapixel sensor also means we can get what is essentially a two times lossless zoom, despite not having a third lens like the pros, and that gives you a much nicer focal length for taking portrait shots. We also now get Apple's Smart HDR5 for the processing and how it handles the dynamic range and the colors and all that good stuff. Although what I am most excited about and all 15s get are these next generation portraits. Which means if you just take a regular old photo, it now also captures the depth information so you can turn it into a portrait photo with all that lovely bokeh background after the fact and even change the intensity of the blur and the focal point. Now, yes, Samsung and Pixel users have had a similar feature for a while now, but it's the first time for an iPhone and all 15s get it, not just the pros. So if you can live with a slight reduction in picture quality and also no sort of long range zoom, and you're not that bothered about ProRes or Pro Raw or being able to shoot spatial video eventually for the upcoming Apple Vision Pro headset, the cameras on these are actually really bloody good. And the selfie camera is exactly the same. The only difference is it can't shoot ProRes or log video. Okay, enough waffling. Let's wrap up this review. Should you buy an iPhone 15 or 15 Plus? Well, it really comes down to what phone are you using at the moment? Are you due an upgrade? But broadly, my answer is yes. USB-C, dynamic island, brighter screens, much improved cameras, a faster chip, and that's all just versus last year's phone. If you've got one from two, three, four years ago, it'll definitely be worth the upgrade. Couple of things to bear in mind though, if you do own an iPhone 12 or earlier, then the base, the cheapest model there was always 64 gigs of storage. Now with iPhones, you get 128 gigs as the sort of entry level, which is great. So you are sort of doubling your storage if you're going from a base iPhone 12 or earlier. Also, while the Pro Max has actually gone up in price in the US by $100, the 15s have stayed the same at $799, same in pounds for the regular 15. And actually that does make this iPhone 15 50 quid cheaper than last year's 14. But if you want 
want the bigger screen and longer battery, then the 15 Plus will cost you 100 more, whereas the 15 Pro, which gets the new titanium frame, the action button, the smoother 120Hz screen, the A17 Pro chip for those upcoming console games, slightly better quality cameras with the extra zoom lens and those Pro options, plus a faster version of USB-C, although that's mostly there just to help transfer the bigger ProRes video files, all that will cost you 200 more than the base iPhone. So all good options, but my recommendation for most people is the cheapest one, you'll be pleased to hear. Just the regular old iPhone 15. And don't really consider the previous 14s. I think they're about hundred pounds less. It's not worth it. The jump up to this is quite significant. So if you're doing an upgrade and you fancy yourself a new iPhone, I reckon this is the best bang for buck if you can live with 60 Hertz which you probably can. But what about you? Have you bought one? Are you thinking about ordering one or just not at all interested this year? Let me know in the comments below and also drop a comment if you've got any questions. And I'll see you next time right here on The Tech Chat.